Today is one of my favorite videos to make each and every year. My top five go-to and available bourbons. Tastes change, new bourbons hit the market, some become more allocated. One thing that hasn't changed is my criteria for this top five list. Let's find out what made my list for 2022 on The Mass Syndrome. What's up guys, I'm Jason Steve from The Mass and Drum. It's always fun to name my top whiskeys and bourbons of the year at the end of each passing year. But as you know, and I know you know, because all of the messages I get, that they are either impossible to find or they are jacked up in price. For the most part, I get it. But this top five list is getting more important each passing year. Bourbon demand is still growing and we all need bottles. We could count on being there when the time comes to replace them. So last year, my top five were Chattanooga 111, George Remus Bourbon, Knob Creek 9-Year Single Barrel, Wild Turkey Rare Breed, and Old Forester 1920. Solid list. Did it change for 2022? So here's my criteria for picking my top five. First, all selections must be available to replace that day. Even if I have to go to a few stores to find one sitting on the shelf, if I have to search a little bit, I could still most likely find it. And I will say this now, what I have here, where I live, in my location, is most likely different from yours. Different allocations, labels, whatever it may be. So if something is on my list that you can't get easily, I'm apologizing in advance before I get 25 comments on how you can't get some of these. Second piece of criteria, and this is different than past, uh, past years I've done this list. Right now, for me, price does not matter. <laughs> as long as it's available and I could get it on a regular basis, it doesn't matter to me for this list for 2022. Most bourbons that are available on the shelf are usually affordable. Obviously, affordability is subjective, but to me, if I have bourbons that I really enjoy that are available regularly, no matter what the price is, I'm buying it. Last piece of criteria, and this is the fun one. Each selection has to be from a different distillery. Now, it's way more of a challenge to do it this way. Honestly, I could probably pick the entire Whiskey Row series from Old Forester or four bottles from Wild Turkey, but switching it up makes it more fun and gives more of an opportunity to try something different. Okay, let's start with my number five. Starting is number five, Makers 46. You're right, this isn't Makers 46. This is Makers 46. But this is the new bottle design that just released not too long ago. I can tell you that this redesign has been about three years in the making. The new design is an effort to bring brand consistency to the core lineup to set the private selects more apart. Makes sense. Let me know in the comments if you like the original or the new design. Either way, Makers 46 starts off as a standard Makers Mark, then heavily seared French oak staves are placed in just emptied standard Makers Mark barrels, which are then refilled and returned to the warehouses to finish aging for around two to three months. Mash bill of 70% corn, 16% wheat, 14% malted barley, 94 proof, and the best part, 35 bucks. So for whatever reason, I find myself going back to this more and more uh, this past year. I mean, it's buttery. It smells like, you know, wheat, wheat bread. <laughs> it's got that, uh, uh, that 16% winter wheat in the mix. I love the heavy caramel, heavy cinnamon, little bit of dark fruit in there and the spice that 46, that, uh, makers 46 stave, which brings that spice component, gives us a nice balance to offset the, you know, some of that easy sipping, uh, uh wheat characteristic. Yeah. For 35 bucks. And again, keep your eye out for the, uh, for the new bottle. Uh, the new bottle design. It's so good, so rich. I love the spice to it. It's my number five. Number four, Wilderness Trail six year from the incredible Wilderness Trail Distillery in Danville, Kentucky. This is their six year old bourbon silver label, mash bill of 64% corn, 24% rye, and 12% malted barley. Bottled and bond, 100 proof, retail price, 70 bucks. All right, I know what you're saying, 70 bucks is a bit steep, and I get it, but the whiskey coming out of Wilderness Trail these days is just exceptional. Sweet mash process, low entry proof to extract more flavor in the barrel, less water added after the fact, perfectly balanced bourbon, and one that I'm happy to pay for because of the quality, the flavors, and the creamy texture. I mean, on the nose, it is super sweet. 
You almost get like, um, there, there's kind of like a mix of banana, chocolate, heavy cinnamon, a little bit of oak, tons of vanilla extract, and man, that's sweet, sweet caramel. And then on the palate, it just explodes with dark fruit, almost like strawberry, blackberry, balanced with, again, that chocolate note, kind of like creme brulee, kind of you got like this vanilla cream, this, uh, that brown sugar top, and then it just explodes with that spice, that high rye mash bill. Yeah, there are some great bourbons out there that are available on the shelf that are a lot cheaper than this, and I get that. But I was just so interested in Wilderness Trail and how their bourbon is progressing and how much better it's getting year after year that I just couldn't stop drinking this stuff. I mean, yeah, 70 bucks, I'm savoring it, not drinking it fast, but at the same time, every time I go to a store, it's just sitting on the shelf, it's absolutely delicious, and I think it's way better than some of the bourbons that people pay even higher prices for, even though it's 70 bucks. Number three, welcome back to the top five, Four Roses Single Barrel. This is a 100 proof OBSV recipe. OBSV is the Four Roses Delicate Fruit and Rye recipe. 60% corn, 35% rye, and 5% malted barley. Priced at about 45 bucks. It's buttery, it's sweet, a little bit floral, but man, the caramel, vanilla, the sweet oak that's in this uh, glass right now. Ooh, a lot of citrus too on the back end of that one. So I'll say this was kind of absent from my store shelves for a hot minute. They weren't bringing them into my area and I was really missing this one. Uh, the Four Rosa Small Batch is a nice alternative, but this one, it just has an extra oomph to it. So I just reviewed this not that long ago on a What's on the Shelf Wednesday episode and I was drinking this several months beforehand and then I was kind of going through my catalog of videos and realized I had never reviewed this. And I was like, what the hell am I doing? Um, so ever since then, it's been available. I've been sipping on this. I forgot how damn good this bourbon is, especially for the price point. It's so damn delicious. Such a great balance. Again, the balance of fruit, spice, sweet, those rich uh, caramel vanilla notes, some oak, a lot of citrus, some floral to it. It's just a delicious bourbon. I think it's a great uh, gateway, not only for just people getting into bourbon, but also for anyone that's been drinking low rye bourbon recipes and are looking to get into high rye. They could see what a little bit of rye, that 35% high rye mash bill, what it could do to the experience on your palate. Just absolutely delicious. Number three, baby. All right, number two. This is my number one from last year. Drops at number two this year. It's Old Forester 1920. The Volstead Act of 1920, which initiated prohibition in the USA, granted permits to six distillers in Kentucky to continue to bottle bourbon for medicinal purposes. Through one of the permits, Old Forester continued to be produced as medicinal whiskey on Louisville's famed Whiskey Row. Now, during that time of medicinal whiskey, all whiskeys had to be bottled at 100 proof. With a barrel entry proof of 100, the Angel Share would have created about 115 proof whiskey after maturation. 1920 Prohibition style bourbon is bottled at 115 proof to represent the rich flavor profile that this bourbon had uh, all those years ago. 72% corn, 18% rye, and 10% malted barley. $60 for this one. It's a constant favorite, always available. Love this damn bourbon. Man, on, on this one, I'm getting just a ton of chocolate and maple syrup. Man, really nice spice. Little hint of cherry too. I think depending on the bottle you get. Now I know they recently changed their labels and some people think that it's tasting completely different than the old label. I don't buy it. Um, I even think when the old label was around and I was continually buying those, even some of those bottles were a little bit different than the one I had tried before. I think some could be a little bit more chocolate forward. Some get into that rich Old Forester banana flavor. Uh, which this one I'm really not getting on the nose. Let's give it a try. Getting a little bit of the banana on the palate, but I still get the chocolate, little hint of cherry, nice black pepper, good bite on the finish. It's it, this, I mean, this is probably a constant on many people's list as far as uh, available bourbons. Even though it's 60 bucks, it's one of those that you can always count on being there. It's always super high quality, always delicious. And until something crazy happens, this will probably be on my top five each and every year. 
All right, guys, before we get to my number one, let's make a cocktail with shaker and spoon. You guys have heard me talk about Shaker and Spoon before, a subscription service that teaches you how to make bar quality cocktails from recipes designed by award-winning mixologists. Now Shaker and Spoon builds these boxes around one singular spirit and tries to give you different styles of cocktail making. They give you recipe cards, how-to videos to guide you through mixing and garnishing the cocktail step by step, and even a glossary that explains any unfamiliar bartending terms. Now each box includes all the ingredients other than the alcohol for about 12 cocktails. You get four from each recipe, there are three recipes. Everything you need, syrups, bitters, garnishes, infusions, hydrosols, all sorts of crazy stuff. They give you specialty syrups that are all house made, all created in small batches in Red Hook, Brooklyn. So what I wanted to do is focus on one box and all three cocktails that are available. Today I'm making one cocktail from the Summer Scotch 2 box. So scotch cocktails, this one has some cool ingredients. I wanted to explore how scotch, a spirit usually sipped neat or maybe with an ice cube, can be used in a cocktail. So for this cocktail, I need the supplied ingredients of strawberry cordial, which is right here, and three dashes of hopped up IPA tincture. Don't know what that means. All right, so pretty simple here to start out. I need my two ounces of blended scotch. All right, now the fun stuff, a half ounce of this strawberry cordial, no idea. Last but not least, three dashes of this hopped up IPA tincture. Shake it a little bit. Well, it smells hoppy. One, two, three. All right, so it says to mix it a little bit, add some ice. All right, this one smells good, let's give it a go. Ooh, holy shit. <laughs> That's really good. I mean, it's peppery. It's it's sweet. The strawberry. I get the maltiness from the uh, from the scotch. This gives you a lot of citrus. Again, that sweetness from that ripe strawberry cordial, and then all of a sudden, it kind of brings brings it all together with the maltiness. A nice balance of sweet, spice, everything nice. For a simple cocktail, it it definitely brings the flavor. I'm having more of this. So let's recap real quickly. Shaker and Spoon is a monthly cocktail subscription box that will deliver these craft cocktails to you. Again, each box has three recipes created by world-class bartenders, as well as enough ingredients for 12 total cocktails, four from each recipe. The subscription starts at 50 bucks a month, but click the link below in the description or use the code you see below to save $20 off your first box. Now go get some fun cocktails delivered to your door and share it with some friends. We still have two more to go in this, uh, in this box. I'm looking forward to it. Some crazy recipes coming. Time to reveal my number one go-to and available bourbon for 2022. I know what many of you might have been thinking, it's got to be Rare Breed, but guess what? I've been gravitating more and more back to one of my original favorites when uh, I first started doing these lists, Russell's Reserve Single Barrel from Wild Turkey. The non-chill filtered 110 proof flavor monster from Wild Turkey, barrel entry proof of 115. So bottling at 110 proof means you likely get a minimally water diluted whiskey. Oh, I love this stuff. Russell Reserve, it's a true single barrel, so it gives you the core wild turkey bourbon notes, the vanilla cream, brown sugar, caramel, creme brulee, oak, with some fruity, spicy, and savory notes that gives each bottle of Russell Reserve its own unique experience depending on the barrel you get. I think this offers everything bourbon lovers want. Now, again, it's non-age stated, but according to interviews with the Russells, most barrels are typically eight to 10 years old. This retails for about 60 bucks and it absolutely crushes most bourbons that folks still wait in line for. This one leans a little bit more towards a grape. There's a little bit of a grape note going on. Oh, still get some of that rye. Mm, it just coats the palate. Balance of oak, spice, sweet. Yeah, to me, it's just, it's such a perfect bourbon. Just gives you such a great mouthfeel being non-chill filtered. It's creamy, has a lot of texture to it. I will say this has received the following these days and and it totally should. It's I've been, you know, talking about Wild Turkey, how good their stuff is and how great Russell's Reserve is. Uh, it makes me both happy and sad that they're finally getting their due credit, but also now that people have caught on to how good this stuff is, even though, yeah, I may have to search a little bit harder to get one of these, I can usually still get one, and that's what makes it such an important bottle to me. 
It's just that bottle, personally for me, that just brings everything I look for and just a damn good bourbon. All right, guys, well, that's my top five go-to and available list for 2022. The best thing about this, uh, and, and this is how I kind of think about it, if I had to pick five bourbons from five different distilleries, when it comes to availability, if the bourbon shells just emptied and these were the only five left, would I be happy and drink these forever? I think I would. So that is the challenge for you. Let me know down in the comments, based on availability in your area, what your top five is. I always like to see if some patterns emerge. Is there, do you guys, do some of you reach for ones that are a little bit higher priced? Do you stay in the budget area? Are these the ones that I named some of your favorites as well? Let me know down in the comments. If you like the video, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. Love to hear your feedback, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey. It's the people you share it with. Cheers. I'll see you next time right here on the Mastin' Drum. Take care, everybody.